Time for Alamogordo Town News on Crazy Radio. I'm Anthony Lucero. When it comes to news on 95.1 FM, weather always comes first. A potent cold front that moved from the west to the east has finally made its way into the portions of the lower Mississippi Valley through the Ohio Valley. And in its wake, freezing to sub-freezing overnight temperatures are expected. Damage to unprotected vegetation and crops is possible. Strong offshore winds are going to continue to impact Southern California, increasing critical fire weather concerns. Closer to home, after that nasty little cold snap, conditions are going to remain quiet for the remainder of the week into the weekend. Light winds and warmer temperatures expected. We'll have another look at the weather following this news. Well, today's the day of the Joint City-County Meeting. We heard from Alamogordo Mayor Susan Payne. I think it's important that we find ways that we can work together to address those areas of mutual concern. So I'm looking forward to this meeting, and my hope is that we will have a productive exchange of ideas that will ultimately just benefit all the citizens, of course, of Otero and and, um, the city of Alamogordo. We also heard from County Commissioner Amy Barella. We're going to be talking about housing, flooding, mental illness, crime. There's a couple of other items on the agenda, but the important thing is that the people show up and the people get heard as to which directions that they would like the county and the city to join together and to represent our constituents. Again, that's happening today at 2 p.m. at the Sergeant Willie Estrada Memorial Civic Center. If you want to hear the ladies' comments in full, they are posted on the Crazy KALH Radio YouTube channel. And we hope to bring you some audio from this meeting on tomorrow's edition of Alamogordo Town News on Crazy Radio. Animal Village NM is once again offering free spay and neuter for your pets. We spoke with Sonny Harris. By emailing us at animalvillagenm at gmail.com for an application. Available from the state for only a short time, the money is running out fast. Just email your request and we'll get that application to you quickly so that you can submit your application before the money runs out. This is available only for a short time unless the organization can collect enough funds to continue. In order to donate or otherwise assist, please visit AnimalVillageNM.org. Alamogordo Animal Control and Kitty City NM are going to be teaming up this Saturday at the mall with an adoption event. Come visit us at the White Sands Mall from 10 to 4 p.m. for the Kitty City Adoption event. Dogs from Alamogordo Animal Control will also be available for adoption. Kathy Denton from Kitty City NM speaking with Crazy Radio. Zoo Boo has come and gone, and it was a lot of fun, but Alameda Park Zoo is not done. The zoo is going to be open late this evening from 12 until 8 p.m. This allows you to see the animals that are typically active at night start to move around and Again, that's 12 to 8 today. Adults are $4, children two fifty. The Alamogordo Elks Lodge invites you for Trunk or Treat happening tonight from 6 until 9 p.m. There's going to be 36 themed trunks. So come on out, enjoy the food and fun. The food trucks are going to be out there as well. Free hot dogs and chips available and a whole lot more. That's tonight, 6 till 9 at the Alamogordo Elks Lodge, 2290 Hamilton Road. Well, today is Tuesday. That means it's time for an introspection with Pastor Johnny Walker. This is Johnny Walker with this week's introspection. Throughout history, those who dare to challenge the status quo have faced immense criticism. But it is precisely in the face of adversity that true progress is born. In our communities, there are individuals who decided to stand up and take action against the injustices that plague our streets. These brave souls refuse to sit idly by while our neighborhoods suffer. Yet inevitably, critics will emerge to suppress their efforts. They will mock their ambitions, question their intent, and attempt to discourage them from noble causes. But I implore you, do not be disheartened by the cynics. For within their criticism lies an opportunity. Use them as fuel, as motivation to continue pushing forward. Even when it seems like an uphill battle, embrace their doubts, for they are a testament to the significance of your actions. While it may be easier to shy away from controversy, we remember that progress only comes to those who dare to defy the odds. We must not fear the critics. Instead, let their words strengthen our resolve. Let their skepticism fuel our determination to prove them wrong. We have so much to gain from our collective push for change the betterment of our communities, the transformation of lives, 
and the creation of a brighter future for us all. Every effort, no matter how small or insignificant it may seem, has the power to make a difference. Remember, it is those who choose to stay silent and do nothing that will ultimately face the harshest criticism. The very individuals who dare to criticize the community for standing by and doing nothing. We are not those people. Let us be the ones who rise above the critics, who rise above the doubt, and who rise as champions of progress. Together, we can create a future that is brighter and more equitable for all. Let us stand united, unwavering in our pursuit of justice and change. This is Johnny Walker. This has been this week's Introspective. We'll see you again next Tuesday on Crazy Radio. News from around the state in just a moment. You're listening to Alamogordo Town News on Crazy Radio. I'm Anthony Lucero. AlamogordoTownNews.com is a locally owned website featuring local news matters from a local perspective that affects you, and we bring it to you directly. Plus, local sports, cultural arts, and events. Online, AlamogordoTownNews.com. Owned and operated by Second Life Media. We are Otero County. Directory Plus is the right size book. It's the book if you need a phone book. That's what just one person has to say about Directory Plus. Plus, with its red cover, features, colorful yellow pages, and lots more, it's no wonder people all over use Directory Plus. It has so much more information. You can cross-check phone numbers or addresses or pretty much anything. Look on the plus side, Directory Plus. I'm a big fan of Directory Plus. Malcolm Torres, the man who admitted to killing his five-year-old stepdaughter, Renesme Calzada, back in 2019, has been sentenced. The body of five-year-old Renesme was found in the Rio Grande on the Santa Clara Pueblo, three days after she was reported missing back in September of 2019. While many in the community searched for her, officials say the girl was already dead before the first call to the authorities was ever made. Renesme had bruises on the back of her head, a broken wrist, and had suffered blunt force trauma. In April, Torres pled guilty to second-degree murder, claiming that he did beat her, but also stated that he was heavily intoxicated and did not recall committing those crimes. During the hearing yesterday, Torres apologized to Renez May's family. And I got an apology and he didn't deny it. So four years of denying and not saying anything and today is the first day we got something is an accomplishment, at least a step forward. That was Renez May's mother, Victoria Maesta, speaking outside the courtroom yesterday. Torres was sentenced to 30 years. An Albuquerque man who has practiced acupuncture now faces a jury for a criminal sexual penetration charge from 2018. A law enforcement investigation led to that charge against 74-year-old Megumi Hirayama. It came after a woman accused Hirayama of rape following a visit in August of 2018. She told law enforcement that he acted professionally during her previous two visits for acupuncture. However, on her third trip, she said Hirayama sexually assaulted her after the receptionist left for a lunch break. Her underwear was collected along with a DNA sample from Hirayama. The DNA report from the underwear was reviewed and tested positive with a match to the acupuncturist. This led to a first-degree charge of criminal sexual penetration against Hirayama. The jury is expected to make a decision in that trial later this week. New Mexico Congressman Gabe Vasquez has unveiled bills on immigration and border issues. In Doniana County alone, just this year, we've had 68 migrant deaths, which is a threefold increase uh, from any other period. One bill permits immigrants who work in health care, education, energy production, or other critical industries to apply for temporary legal status. Another bill would add harsher sentences for trafficking children. The third sets aside funds to add smart technology and staff at ports of entry. Congress has not been able to accomplish comprehensive immigration reform for the better part of three decades. And we have to take some type of approach to helping to solve both some of the issues and the challenges at our border, but also our immigration issues all across the country. How about close the border or maybe some harsher penalties for those that cross anyway? I guess that really wouldn't fit in with the current narrative that is hyped by the left. New Mexico's Tourism Department is giving out nearly $2 million to communities around the state to help take care of and improve local tourist attractions. Destination Forward is the New Mexico Tourism Department's newest grant program, which just got underway this past summer. Ten localities from around the state were chosen to get this one-time appropriation of state funding to assist with tourism-related infrastructure projects. One of the recipients is the village of Fort Sumner. There's an idea for a new exhibition there detailing the history of DeBaca County from the Bosque Redondo Memorial to Billy the Kid's time to present day. They were awarded over $200,000.
In northern New Mexico, the city of Farmington was awarded half a million to build onto facilities at their Gateway Park, creating a covered pavilion for a myriad of community events and an outdoor amphitheater near the Animas River. Eight other communities also received funding. Bayard received 50000 for preservation plans for a historic building in the mining district. Clovis received 17000 to design, develop, and install interpretive signage at the Hillcrest Park Zoo. Grants received 384000 to install grandstands at the Grants Multipurpose Arena. Roswell received hundred grand for the planning and installation of wayfinding and downtown gateway improvements for Main Street. Curry County received 380000 to install an LED video screen at the Curry County Events Center and Fairgrounds. McKinley County received hundred grand to plan and design improvements to Red Rock Park RV Campground. The Northwest Council of Governments received hundred grand for the planning and development of more tourism assets along the trail of the ancient scenic byway. And Sandoval County received $50,000 for the renovation of a historic building at El Zacalo Plaza. Cancer treatments take a lot out of a person, but scientists at Sandia National Labs are working on a patch to lessen those effects. One of the biggest concerns that led to this new patch was shared by Isaac Avina on KOB. You see, when applying radiation therapy, including proton therapy, the movement of patients can lead to damaging healthy tissue. If there's any movement during that treatment, they can hit radiation, they can hit healthy tissue around the treatment. And sometimes it's hard to remain still, especially for small children. So how exactly does this patch help? So this is a wearable patch that goes onto the patient. It moves with the patient. Whenever the patient moves, either the patient, as it's moving, the beam can move with the patient and help to minimize some of that error. Or if it's a large movement, it'll shut off the beam completely. The device is still in the testing phase, but once it's completed, physicians can use it within the next few years. Sports and weather are coming up next. This is Alamogordo Town News on Crazy Radio. I'm Anthony Lucero. They are role models and educators. Their work requires a great deal of time and energy for very little pay. Who are these unsung heroes? Thanks, Coach. Thanks, Coach. The simple truth about education-based athletics in New Mexico is this. Without a committed team of coaches and administrators, they just wouldn't be possible. School sports, they bring out the best in all of us. This message presented by the New Mexico Activities Association and the New Mexico Athletic Directors Association. An Atrisco Heritage football player is recovering after suffering a concerning on-field injury during Saturday's game against Volcano Vista. Javan Smith received three spinal fractures. Due to that injury, the game was suspended and both teams mutually agreed to end the game as it stood. Both of the teams, my Atrisco Heritage and Volcano, both came together in the middle of the field. They just... uh took a knee and said a prayer for me, which was because it was it was a little bit of a heated game. So it was very heartwarming for me to see that they were able to get over what had happened during the game and just come together for that moment. Smith's mother says that he would not need surgery and was released from the hospital. Smith will not be able to participate in any athletic competition for at least two more months, but he is expected to make a full recovery. There are 34 matches for New Mexico volleyball today. Some of those include Gateway Christian at Floyd, Hagerman at Jowl, Lake Arthur at Dora, New Mexico Military Institute at Dexter, Roswell at Hobbs, and Oregon Mountain comes to Alamogordo. <laughs> Go Lady Tigers! There are 18 games scheduled so far for New Mexico football this Friday, including Grady at Roy Mascaro, Boleyn at Deming, Hatch at Dexter, Loving at Santa Rosa, and Tularosa heads to Jowl. <laughs> Go Wildcats! Your crazy radio spot on weather forecast for the Tularosa Basin today calls for sunny skies. Mostly clear tonight, sunny tomorrow. Your high today in the basin, 57. Your low tonight, an even freezing, 32. High tomorrow, 59 degrees. In Cloudcroft, sunny skies today. Winds are going to be gusting as high as 22 miles per hour. Mostly clear tonight, sunny tomorrow. Your high today for Cloudcroft, 40. Wind chill is going to make it feel like it's 4. Low tonight of 19. High tomorrow, 44 degrees. Local breaking news can be found on our website, alamogordotownnews.com, and you can learn more about Crazy Radio by visiting kalhradio.org. We've also launched the Crazy KALH Radio YouTube channel. That features our daily newscasts, complete interviews, and other information which concerns everyone in the Tularosa Basin. Well, that concludes today's edition of Alamogordo Town News on Crazy Radio. Have fun on this Halloween, and we'll talk to you tomorrow.